Good evening YouTubers, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, first of all, a little apology. I know I put a video up last night. <laughs> it wasn't until I'd gone on to your channels afterwards that it occurred to me that it was uh, All Hallows Eve and uh, the last few days just blended into one. So I want to wish you a belated, terrifyingly happy Halloween. I hope you all had a good one. Um, I didn't get any trick-or-treaters last night around here, so he just went past me, so sorry about that. <clears throat> anyway, tonight's subject, as promised, is about tobacco and smoking right now. Vapors. Mm. And just to show I don't only smoke Sangalf and Galf and Hoggart, this is McConnell's Scottish Cake. I think it's safe to say the very first vapour I tried. And I'm smoking it in a Jean-Claude Tigrato or Tigrano. It said that on the listing when I bought it, but it's not stamped on here anyway, but it is a Jean-Claude. Not sure I'm too keen on the stem on that one, but um, it was a nice shape. And it is a sitter. Nice. Okay. Pariq. I really can't remember when I first tried a vapour. I'm going to say it's probably well into my smoking <clears throat> um, life. Is that the right word for it? So after a few years of first started smoking. I wasn't very experimental to start off with, primarily because I wanted to get the technique right. Yeah, I mean, remember I started off with flakes, but as I was buying more pipes with the different bowl sizes, it's just packing it right, it's keeping it alight, it's learning how to tamp properly, when to get the ash out, keeping it alight, and all those things, you know, as <clears throat> most of you, I hope, will concur, is that at first it, it can become so frustrating. I'm no doubt that there are some of you just take it to it like a duck to water. Me, I didn't really, apart from those the thing that kept me going, I and mean, that's a story gone back into one of the first videos, yeah. But yeah, I had my trials and tribulations with that, and there were times I just wanted to pack it in and go back to the cigarettes. And to be honest with you, there were times that I did, but I persevered. So I'm probably gonna say, hazard a guess, I started smoking vapors, or started experimenting with different types of tobacco, about 2005. And by that time, I had a lot of more information available to me. I was I'm doubting on the internet by then, um, which I wasn't when I first started smoking. So I could look these things up, get a bit more information about it. Um, and <clears throat> I probably went to vapours, or took to vapours more naturally, as I was a big fan of Virginia's, and it was a Virginia with Paris. Um, now I've got these print-offs here. This is the descriptions I was getting. Okay, so again, I'm just guessing these are about 2004, 2005. This is a nice uh, minimalist description of Perique. Okay, black spiced tobacco from Louisiana. Okay, it's spiced. Uh, this is a bit more of a detailed description. Another spiced tobacco grown only in St. James Parish, Louisiana. Perique is subjected to extreme pressure and is allowed to ferment as it is cured, which results in a very distinctive tobacco. Mm, doesn't say much. Bit of kind of sales pitch there. Okay, so that was enough for me to start to try it as well. <clears throat> and yes, you know, I'm in agreement with everybody who reviews a tobacco with perique in it. You do get that peppery taste. Yep, that's the thing. That's the one word or the one adjective everybody uses to describe perique: peppery. Yep. They go, you know, I'm getting that Virginia in there. And always there's that bit of peppery puree coming up. Okay. Excuse me, I've got to light up, okay. <laughs> I resign myself to the fact. And I hope this may come with practice. Is that I'm going to try to keep a pipe alight while I'm gabbing on. This is a bit of better tobacco, but it's a broken flake, this McConnell's cake. And it is lovely. Anyway, Perique, yes. And when I first started smoking, it's difficult for me to remember when I first started smoking it as well. And 
and since then it's there are really no long periods I go without having some vapors yeah it's Virginians I smoke a lot and then regularly vapors I do love the vapors um, and as I just decided to do this I thought not well, shall I go a couple of days or two or three days before I do this video before I smoke a pre now I'm smoking the uh, Gareth and Hoggart Louisiana flake here we go. <laughs> uh, this is nonsense. Mm, yeah. And as I started smoking it, I'm going to get to the point here by the way. I know there doesn't seem to be one. And the more I started smoking it, I thought, well, apart from getting a good Virginia, the sweet Virginia, which I always like, there's got to be more to this puree. There's something that's got to keep me smoking this than just peppery. If it was just a peppery taste, I probably wouldn't stick with it, but there's more to that. And I was trying to put a, a flavour, as I always try to do, behind it, yeah? What is beyond this peppery taste? And it took me quite a while to get it. And I've tried a number of uh, different vapours. My standard ones are, the one I'm smoking at the moment, McConnell Scottish Cake, lovely. Inevitably, <laughs> no surprise there, the wonderful St James Flake. The authentic, the bona fide from St. Pat's and James Parish. Um, now these two, which I know have also got black Cavendish in, which I'm not a huge fan of, but I'll forgive these anything. They're very expensive, but they're very delicious. Davidoff medallions. And another favourite of everybody's, all it's balls away. Yeah. Two lovely perinks, a little centre of black Cavendish. <laughs> Wonderful. And Marlin Flake. Okay, it took me a while, I didn't even bother looking at it. I either thought this was a straight from Virginia. But um, if you go onto the Colhaza uh, Cop, the blender site, it will say in Hocht Perique, a hint of Perique in there. I think it's also got some Cavendish in there as well. Um, now, one I haven't tried, <clears throat> and, and it's, it's one I've been putting off for a while because I hear that um, Germain's is not the greatest tobaccos, certainly not the ones we can get here in the UK. So I haven't tried that one. But again, going back to the point, I was trying to think what it was about Perique that kept me with it. And I was trying to compare to something, taste, you notice I do that, I think we all do that. And the only thing I could come up with behind the pepper was a kind of a warm, delicate sweetness to it, which wasn't the Virginia. And the only thing I could compare it to, and people in the UK will get this immediately, was a digestive biscuit. I say in the UK, but you might have that in the, U in the US and Europe as well. I don't know what the equivalent is. It's kind of a, a soft, almost a wholemeal, crumbly biscuit made of brown sugar. So it's not that cloying sweetness you get from the normal granulated sugar they'll use. It's a, a delicate sweetness. And that's why I stuck with it, but it was still niggling at me. Um, but enough to keep me going with vapours. And it wasn't until a YouTube presenter and I wish I could remember which one it was and I cannot and I've got so many in my bookmarks now I'm not going to go trawling through to find out who, who it was. Either the presenter themselves or a friend of theirs smoked some pure puri blending tobacco and the taste that they said at the end of it, one or two bowls, I don't know how many it was, but certainly enough to say the flavour I'm getting out of this beyond, beneath, behind the pepper was dried bananas. <laughs> And I listened to this and I thought, yeah, that's almost perfect. Dry bananas, but mixed with my digestive biscuits. So um, I don't know whether you guys get that. It's not just pepper. There is something there about it. It's that lovely blend. Um, I banged on longer than I thought here. I'm really sorry. So uh, that's my little um, stance on Perique. So uh, thanks very much. Uh, take care. Bye-bye.